Hi everyone, it is April from Getting Cocoa With It. Today I'm going to share with you everything that is on my Amazon wish list right now. So let's get into it. So I have quite a few books that I've added to my Amazon wish list. I have bought so many books from my wish list at like thrift stores and chapters and Amazon and I'm I'm kind of on a uh, book buying spree as of late um, but I have added several these are the books that are really on my radar that I'm really excited about so I wanted to share them with you for the most part they've already come out um, there are a few that haven't come out yet that I I'm very eager to read the first book I want to share with you is The Majesties by Tiffany Sow, I think is how you say her last name. Um, this is meant to be a bit of like a, a murder mystery about these two sisters. Um, we follow one sister in particular who is explaining what happened to her family. Her family is very, very wealthy. Um, but her sister took offense, um, was offended in some way by them and poisoned the entire family. She even poisoned our main character and you find out what happened. It sounds so screwed up and so right up my alley. The next book is Dear Child by Romy Hausman. Um, this one is coming out, I think, in October, if I'm not mistaken. I heard about this by Abby from Crime by the Book. And people are saying that this is Gone Girl meets Room, which is basically all I needed to know. Um, we follow a woman named Lena and then a little girl who escape their captor together. And it sounds really, really fun. Next is The Very Thought of You by Rosie Allison. This is a World War II historical fiction book. This is about a group of kids who are being evacuated from London to the English countryside because the bombs are about to drop. So we follow Anna who, along with many other children, end up on this estate with these uh, this couple who I think are childless. And she ends up being kind of embroiled in their very, I don't know if it's disturbing or just rocky relationship and she should not be seeing the things that she's seeing. Um, usually the stories of kids going to the countryside is a little bit more heartwarming, but this one sounds like it's going to be a doozy. So that sounds really good. And then there's The Confession by Jesse Burton. This has like Diane Setterfield, The 13th Tale vibes to me. And I think this is about a very old woman telling the story of her life and it just sounds wonderful to me. Next is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is, of course, Ruth Ware. So it's a murder mystery where you follow a group of coworkers who go to stay at like a chalet or something and they get snowed in. And I think one by one, they're being killed off. An avalanche, I think, gets the first one. And then I don't know what happens from there, but it sounds like a lot of fun, like good read for the winter. The Death of Vivek OG um, is another book that sounds fantastic. Um, this is about uh, a mother who opens her door one day and sees the body of her dead child. I think he's a grown man. Um, and it is about what happened to this man um, up to his death. Reasons She Goes to the Woods by Deborah K. Davies is totally a Leanne thing. This is about a little, I think Leanne did a whole video about like creepy kids, which is right up my alley. And this is about a young girl who, spends a lot of time in the woods exploring. Um, and at first you think she's a very innocent person, but as it goes on, apparently you start to go, well, that was a weird thing. And that was a little weirder. Who is this kid? And I, I'm totally down for that. Next is The Upstairs Room 
by Kate um, Murray Brown. This is a haunted house story. It's a literary haunted house story, so you never know if the house really is haunted or not. But I think this is about a family who move into a home and the upstairs room, there's lots of noises going on up there and they don't know, they don't think anyone's supposed to be living up there, but oh, sounds so creepy. I love like a haunted house story at this time of year. I'm, I'm really into that. Um, it's probably one of my favorite subgenres of horror. Next is Highway of Tears, a true story of racism, indifference, and the pursuit of justice for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Um, this is a nonfiction book that is really important to me. Canada has a very terrifying history um, still going on where Indigenous women and girls are going missing. Many, many are being murdered and the police are not looking into it the same way that they need to be looking into it. Um, so I think I really want to educate myself on indigenous, indigenous issues going forward. Next is the Mitfords, Letters Between Six Sisters. So I don't really know anything about the Mitfords except they're meant to be a group of sisters that are incredibly like dramatic essentially there's there's a lot of drama between these women um I think one of them had Nazi sympathies I could be mistaken but it, it's essentially collected letters and they're spent they're meant to be quite witty and obviously very dramatic and I think that sounds like a really interesting read. Another nonfiction is Lady in Waiting, My Extraordinary Life in the Shadow of the Crown by Anne Glenn Connor. So Anne was, I think, Princess Margaret's um, Lady in Waiting. And so she shadowed her and took care of her. And I mean, Margaret had a very interesting life and was like a very larger than life kind of woman. And she had so much heartache in her life. And so I'd love to know Anne's story from her own words. I, apparently she came from um, like a poorer background and then to like go from that to like being in the palace all the time, that would be interesting. Next is The Patron, the Patron Saint of Liars by Anne Patchett. So I read The Dutch House this year and absolutely loved it. I've read Bel Canto, loved it. Um, so this is one of her first books and we follow um, an unwed mother. Um, she's pregnant, I believe, and she goes to stay at a nunnery, something along those lines, along with many other unwed mothers. And the, the idea is that they're going to stay there while they're pregnant and then adopt their child out to different couples. I think she decides to keep the baby and it's about her life. Sounds really good. Next is Run, also by Ann Patchett. This takes place over 24 hours and we follow um, a family. Um, the mother has died and there is a blizzard in this 24 hours. There's a blizzard, a fight between two people and um, an accident that involves a stranger and her child and it changes this family's life and I need to know what in the world happened. Next is American Spy by Lauren Wilkinson. This is about a black spy. I don't need to know anymore. It's meant to be really really good so there's that. Then there's A Book of Secrets by Kate Morrison. Um, this is about a black woman, I think in like the Tudor's time. And she is, um, I think a lady in waiting essentially, but she is also trying to um, find her brother who she was ripped away from at some point uh, when they were children. So she's trying to find him. It sounds really sad and really compelling. Next is The Seven or Eight Deaths of Stella Fortuna. I have heard that this is like life after life. I've heard it many times compared to life after life, which is one of my favorite books of all time. 
So I don't really want to know much more about it than that because I want to go in a little bit blind, but it just sounds really wonderful and right up my alley. Next is The Lost Ones by Anita Frank. This is meant to be really gothic. Um, another thing that I love at this time of year, or any time of year if I'm being honest, is also meant to be um, a bit of a ghost story. So people compare this to um, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins and also The Turn of the Screw. I mean, yes. Next is Seven Fallen Feathers, Racism, Death, and Heart Truths in a Northern City by Tanya Tala Talaja. Um, and this is about the murder of, I believe, several Indigenous peoples in, is it Windsor? It's in Northern Ontario. I live in Ontario, not Northern, Southern Ontario, but still, I'm I don't know anything about this. And as I said before, I'm really interested in learning more about Indigenous um, in, indigenous issues that are happening in Canada every single day. Why don't I know about this story? It's yeah. So I want to learn about that for sure. Next is the Shadow King. This is up for the Booker Prize. It's been shortlisted for the Booker Prize. It is a World War II historical fiction book set in Ethiopia during the occupation, um, I think it was occupied by Italy, which I did not know that they were ever occupied or even involved in World War II. And I'm, you know, there's so many World War II stories that take place in France or Germany or England. And I love all of those stories, totally, don't get me wrong, but this sounds fascinating. Um, so I'm super curious about that. Sugar is next. And this is about female, black female friendship. And I read The Color Purple this year by Alice Walker. And what really pulled me into that story more than anything was the friendship between women and women holding other women up. And this sounds right up my alley. I think it sounds amazing. Next is The Last Thing You Surrender, a novel of World War II. So this is um, obviously a World War II historical fiction novel, but about Black people during the war. And I think we follow um, soldiers as well, Black soldiers who fought during World War II. Um, and I don't know enough about that history either. So that sounds really good. Serious Blooms at Night is next. Um, my sister loved this book once upon a time and I totally forgot about it until recently. I can't remember what booktuber it was that was reading it or had just hauled it. It's a literary mystery book set in the Caribbean and that just sounds absolutely delightful to me. Next is The Jane Austen Society uh, by Natalie Jenner. This is meant to be a lot like um, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, um, but this society is uh, our avid Jane Austen readers, and there might be a bit of romance in here, and it just sounds like a really feel-good historical fiction book that I can get on board with. D Disturbed is next by Jennifer Janes. Rachel from The Shades of Orange um, mentioned this recently about books that she's loved um, and she said that this is quite similar in plot to Final Girls by Riley Sager and I loved Final Girls so that sounds amazing to me. Next is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek uh, by Kim Michelle Richardson. I read The Giver of Stars recently by Jojo Moyes uh, which is about like a traveling library in history that actually existed and this is the same kind of story, but set somewhere else, I think. And it sounds fantastic. I, I love The Giver of Stars, so I think I'd like that too. Next is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. Now, Grady Hendrix wrote The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which is now my favorite horror book of all time. I loved it so much. Funny, terrifying, yes. So this one is about a band. And I think the lead singer 
decides to sell the souls, not his own soul for fame, but the souls of all of his bandmates, his ex-bandmates. So he like skyrockets to fame and everyone else in the band is having like the worst time of it. And they somehow find out that he's done this and they're like exacting revenge, I think. Next is A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. I think this is um, meant to be released in January and it's a novella, um, but it's supposed to be terrifying about this teenage couple who find a house at the bottom of a lake and like swim down to it. I think it can be very claustrophobic. I am terrified of that, of drowning of being, feeling like I, I'm trapped, just this, this is going to terrify me, but I, I'm, I'm up for it. Next is Ring Shout by P. Um, Clark. So this is a horror book written by um, a black author, and it's supposed to have a supernatural twist based on the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, I don't know much more about it than that. It's coming out in October, but it sounds really interesting and I've heard very good things about this. Um, the Museum of You is Next by Kara Spray. I've heard so many booktubers talk about this over the years, like Jen Campbell. Um, she compared it, I think it was her, or it was Lauren Wade who compared it to The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon, which I adored and it's got a, a similar vibe. I think this is about a a girl who's lost her mother and it's about her going through the objects of her mother. Maybe I'm getting that wrong, but it does sound, it sounds lovely. And just comparing it to the trouble with goats and sheep. I mean, my eyes, I was immediately quite interested. Um, next is Men We've Reaped, a memoir by Jasmine Ward. This is nonfiction. Um about I think five black men who died uh, before their time in Jasmine Ward's life. So this I think is going to be very emotional and it will be something that I'll need to pick up when I'm ready for it and I can do it because it's going to be um, very sad I think. Similarly, The Skin We're In, A Year of Black Resistance and Power by Desmond Cole. Um, this is about, um, I think it's about the police in Toronto and how they have treated black people. As a Canadian, I feel like that's required reading. The Henna Artist is next. Um, and this is set in India and it's meant to be quite good. I think this is a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. And I recently, well, this is a couple months ago now, but I watched Indian matchmaking on Netflix and I found it so fascinating that I immediately was like, right, I need more like Indian literature in my life. And this is one that's very, very popular. And I think it's going to be good. So there is that. The Liar's Girl is next by Katherine Ryan Howard. Um, I have The Nothing Man on its way to me right now, which sounds so scary. And this one also sounds equally scary. This is about a girl who falls head over heels in love with this guy in college named Will. Um, he seems perfect for her, but then her like best friend in college is murdered by a serial killer. And it turns out that might be Will. Um, he might be the serial killer. I think he's caught, he's sent to prison, and it's like, what does she do? Does she believe it? Does she not? That sounds like fun. The next is Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Um, she wrote The Warmth of Other Suns, which I haven't read yet. Um, she talks about how America has a hidden caste system that people aren't aware of, but is very much existing and is very much rooted, I think, in racism. And that sounds fascinating to me. I don't think she comes out with books often. I think she researches a long time before she comes out with anything. So that sounds fantastic. Saving Ruby King is about a black woman whose mother is murdered and the police do practically nothing about it. 
and it's her grappling with her mother's murder and also trying to get to the bottom of who murdered her mother um, and having to take justice on herself. Um, the Stranger Beside Me is next and this is a true crime book um, one of the most famous true crime books by Anne Rule. She actually knew and worked with Ted Bundy and it's her story. That's all I needed to know. Also, it was one of the books that was read in the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and their little book club. So I, I want to read all of those. Um, Dolores Claiborne is next by Stephen King. This is meant to be more of a thriller than horror and I don't think I've read any horror by Stephen King so I'm very curious about this. I think this is about a dysfunctional mother and daughter relationship and that sounds fabulous. So those are all the books that are currently on my Amazon wish list. It's a long list but like I just add to it and then once in a while actually quite often I will find these at thrift stores or I'll like cave and buy things. Anyway um so uh let me know in the comments below have you read any of these do any of these seem interesting to you these are all majorly on my radar right now i hope you guys are doing well and i'll talk with you soon bye